Hey everybody, so this lesson is going to be about how to make a scatter plot. We're going to be making a scatter plot using some data from the World Development Indicators Data Bank. So um, if you Google that, World Development Indicators, um, you'll see the link to it uh, and just click on that and that'll bring you here. And you want to be on the Countries tab here because if you're on the All tab, just to start off with, if you're on the All tab, then you're also going to get the aggregates in addition to the countries. So you'll also have averages for the, you know different regions and for the world and that kind of thing. And if you're making a scatter plot, you don't want that. You really just want the countries. If your goal is to you know um, basically um, graph x versus y uh, for a group of countries. Um, and two variables for uh, for a group of countries, then you just want the countries. You don't want the regional averages. Okay, so go to countries, and then you can hit select all. And then the next thing you want to do is select an indicator. And what we have selected from a previous exercise, I believe, should still be there, is female labor force participation rates. for the working age population. Yes, labor force participation rate, female percent of the female population ages 15 to 64 modeled ILO estimate. So that's what we want there. And then for time, what you want here is, I'm gonna clear this out. Um, what you want is a recent year, but um, so that countries have data. Um, you don't want necessarily the most recent year, although you could fool around with this if you're just looking for the the most the if you're looking for super you know the most recent data you can find you want to fool around with it to see how much missing data there is in recent years but just to be on the safe side for this example we're going to choose uh, 2017 oh and um, actually since we're this is a scatter plot we're going to need two variables so it's not just going to be female labor force participation we're also going to be doing a GDP per capita. Um, and we're going to see how that, you know, if there's a relationship between GDP per capita or wealth and female labor force participation rates or what kind of uh, relationship there is. So just type in GDP and basically you'll see a bunch of different options here uh, for GDP per capita. We're going to be choosing on GDP per capita in constant 2015 U.S. dollars. Okay, um, just go ahead and select that. Okay, so we've got that and we can hit apply changes. And that should give us data for 2017 for all of these countries. And we're not gonna go through all of them to see if the data is there. We're just gonna download the data and then start to work with it. And from there we can figure out uh, what is available and what's not and what has to be um, changed. So just go ahead and download that and go ahead and open it. Um, and in, in Excel so that we can work with it. But we can delete some things first of all. So let's just delete these things out of here. Um, enable editing. Okay, so what we need to do next is to delete uh, a couple of these things. We wanna keep the series indicator so we can delete this country abbreviation. Um, we can delete the series code, okay? Um, and this is, it says 27, uh, 2017, but really what this is, is are the values that we're going to be working with. Okay. Um, so, um, so those are the three things we need. We need the country name, the series name, and the values. And what you'll notice if you're going down, you're looking through these data, is that for each country, we have two values. We have one for labor force participation and one for GDP per capita. Okay, and, um, and that's true for every country in the database. And then this goes all the way down to 435 observations. Um, so divide that in half and whatever, or 434, so 217 countries, two observations each, one for labor force participation rates and one for GDP per capita. Okay. So this is not a format. This, these data are in long, what we call long format, and we can't um, do the uh, analysis with them in long format. We have to get them into wide format. And so how are we gonna do that? 
we're going to do that with a pivot table. So we're going to go to insert and there you'll see pivot table and hit from table range. And then what you'll see is it's going to automatically, it should automatically select the data. If it doesn't, you have to select the data range. Okay. It does automatically select the data. Let's pretend that it doesn't though, just for a second. Okay. So if it didn't, then what we could do is, um, uh, from table range, uh, you know, we could go ahead and we could select the data in a range ourselves, just like this, which is a little bit more cumbersome, but that's the way you would do that. Okay. And then it asks you, do you want to open it in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet just to be safe? Let's just say a new worksheet. Okay. And then what you'll see is country name, series name, and values. And you're going to drag country name to the rows. You're going to drag series name to the columns because you want the series to be in the columns. And then you're going to drag the values to the values. Okay. Now this doesn't look right. Why? Because it's telling you the count of the values. It's telling you how many values there are, but that's not what you want. You want the actual values. So here you're going to select this drop down and you go to value field settings. And then from there, you're going to go to, you can click on a number of things to give you the right place, but just hit max values or you can hit almost anything else and you'll get the right value. Um, but that's the trick there. So now you've got, basically you've got for each country, you've got one row with a value for GDP per capita and a value for the labor force participation rate and this grand total. Okay. And we need to edit this a little bit further, but don't try to do it here because it's in a pivot table form, create a new worksheet. Okay. Then hit, um, right click, um, and, uh, or whatever the Mac equivalent of that is. I'm forgetting at the moment, forgive me. Um, but then, uh, just click paste as value. Okay. Paste as values. And that should give you what you need. And then what you can do is you can, first of all, delete out this first, this top row. Okay. And then, um, let's just go with some standardized, um, uh, format for our variables here. So, and we'll just put LF labor force participation. Uh, female labor force participation, FLFP, and then grand total. This is something we don't need. This is just an artifact of that pivot table. It doesn't really make any sense. We don't need a grand total. Um, we just wanted to use the pivot table to get the data into uh, wide form. Okay, so here we go. So now we have the appropriate, the data in the appropriate form. And then from here, well, we, we can build our scatter plot. But before we do that, notice that some of these values are zero. When we made the pivot table back here on this sheet, right, it took some of these missing values essentially. And if we go back to the original data, we can see that these values were missing. Um, so here we go for American Samoa late female labor force participation rate was missing, but when it went to the uh, pivot table, it turned it to, into a zero. That's not correct, is it? And I think what we can say, it's, you know, it's not always the case that we want to trend. We want to just treat zeros as missing or replace missing with zeros. We want to kind of use our heads in these situations. Um, so use your head. But here, um, I think we can see that in sheet, this we're on sheet two, um, and we'll just rename this right now so we don't lose track of it. Scatter plot. Um, we can, okay, just call that scatter plot. We can maybe call this uh, pivot table. All right, um, so now we know where we are. Okay, but we know that these values should not be zeros. Okay, so what I would recommend here is going to uh, sort and filter 
make sure that you're, you have this uh, cell selected right here, the first cell in this column, and uh, go to sort and filter, sort smallest to largest. Now all of these are zeros. Is it possible that some of them are real zeros? That we have zero female labor force participation? And that is where you have to learn your use your head. Is this an artifact of the pivot table? Or is this real? And we could go through every one of these values and check, but it's highly unlikely that any country has exactly zero labor force, female labor force participation, right? Probably not. So let's go ahead and um, just simplify things here. And we can just select these and we can go ahead and delete them out, all right? And then we can do the same thing with GDP per capita. We can do an, a sort from smallest, or from, went the wrong way there, smallest to largest. And again, is it possible, we can imagine negative GDP for a year or something like that, but exactly zero, right? In the context of recession, we might have negative GDP, but exactly zero seems unlikely so here we have more missing values um and again we could be more meticulous about this and actually go and do research on each of these countries and try to figure out was their gdp exactly zero for that year but probably not so probably safe to go ahead and delete those rows out okay so now uh, again we can sort on country if we want to have them in order from a to z um, and then we can go ahead and select the two columns Oh, one thing, one other thing I want to do here is a transformation because GDP per capita is skewed, right? Um, we have skewed distribution with, um, you know, uh, countries kind of bunching together. Um, typically, that is a variable that economists would and political scientists would, um, would want to log. All right, so one thing we're gonna do here, just to kind of show the relationship a little bit more clearly so that things aren't all bunched up. Um, so what we can do here is we can insert a column and uh, we can do a log GDP per capita variable and we can apply a function equals log to this GDP variable and then we get the log value of it And then we can copy and paste that all the way down. And then what we want to do is graph these two, um, basically do the scatter plot with these two uh, with these two variables. So we're going to go ahead and insert. Um, and from here, uh, we are going to go to charts and hit this little um, drop down. Okay, and now we can see here right away that everything's kind of, even though we have log values, everything's sort of bunched up over here on the right. So one thing we can do is we can take the, uh, the X axis there, we can hit format axis. If you see something like this happening in one of your own charts, you may want to change the bounds of either the X or the Y axis. So here, well, it seems like two would probably be a good threshold to start at, okay? And then from there, we may uh, want to insert also a, um, add a trend line. Um, add trend line, okay? And if we add a trend line, I think for this, a poly polynomial is gonna be good because it's gonna show us the curve there, um, that there is this curve linear relationship between development or wealth and female labor force participation rates. Uh, and we can sort of see that here in this chart if we do this polynomial trend line. Okay, so then what we wanna do is we wanna click on that trend line. Okay, so we could go here to format trend line and we can go to color and we can uh, select a different color for it. Maybe let's try red then we can change the thickness of it to make it appear a little bit um, bigger, right? So that we can see it a little bit better. 
Um, and we can also change the dash type if we want it to maybe look more like a dash and less like a line. Wow, that's really thick right there. So let's take that down a few notches there. But that does uh, kind of show us the trend to make it stand out a little bit and you can pull around with it and see what works best. Okay, again here we need uh, access, access uh, titles probably. Here um, it's not clear what this is so we can have a log GDP per capita uh, here and we can write here that this is going to be this is female labor force participation percent so we can just write percent and then up here for the chart title basically what we can do is just uh, call this um, uh, wealth and female labor force participation right okay convenient name for any scatter plot is just the x and y right um, very simple way to label a uh, title a scatter plot um, okay so that's all uh, that's all there is to it as far as uh, scatter plots are concerned um, and in the next lesson we'll talk about how to make a map with Excel